Um, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to to this um to the start, the very first session of the organizational change management masterclass. I hope we can see my screen. I'm sharing the slides. Okay, thank you. Um, so um this this training is um organized by Pullard Consult, and we are a training and consulting organization. We provide training and coaching services for um, in the areas of business analysis, project management, and change management. And our focus um, is really for um, job readiness training. We do not, for now, we're not providing certification training. I have a lot of people reaching out to me to ask, oh, I need um, support for CBA PMP certification. We do not um, cater to those audience for now. Our focus is to help you um, be job ready. For example, you want to start a BA job, we believe the certification knowledge is not enough. You need to have hands-on experience, understand deliverables, how to go about them and all of that. So we do that in the area of um, business analysis and project management. And um, hopefully by the end of May, June, we're launching our change management, organizational change management um, training, which is also hands-on focus, not certification. Um, we are affiliated to some um, certification body, for example, the IBA, um, also the PMI. Um, I also, I'm, I'm ProSci certified, and also my, my lead um, coach, as I would introduce her later for the organizational change management, has um, some change management certifications too. Um, so for those that do not know me, my name is Oge. I have over 15 years experience, practical experience working um, as a BA, I've worked um, as a PM. I've also done change management on projects. I have supported um, various um, organizations in multiple domains to provide these um, services. Currently, what I do now, aside from my nine to five, where I actively work as a BA and a PM, I leverage my wealth of experience to help other people that want to start careers in business analysis and all um, project management and chain management. I do not do this alone. So I also leverage on the expertise of uh, my network, my um, colleagues, people I've known in, in the industry that are grounded and know what they do to be able to deliver these services. I'm the lead coach at Polar Consults. I also do international speaking, I write. Um, I'm the director for professional development at the IBA Halifax chapter. I also design um, business analysis curriculum for um, higher education institutions. Those are just a few of some of the things I do. So um, I would quickly introduce um, our speaker for tonight. She would be um, anchoring this for the next three weeks. Every week she'll be coming to share some of um, what um, some of her experiences, what she's learned in organizational change management, and I would really employ you to take this serious not um, um I, you, it, it comes right to find um ocm trainings that are practical that um, they're not very much available like you'll see in business analysis and project management and this is taking her quite a lot to put together so please let's take advantage of um, this opportunity um so Masha has um she has an msc in computer-based management information system she actually has about 13 years experience. I need to update this slide, please. So she's a continuous learner. She loves sharing what she knows and learning along the way. And really she'll be demonstrating that fact here because she willingly took her time to put um, the curriculum for these three weeks together. She takes pleasure in helping others navigate the messiness for the win. And some people that are on this call would testify to that. So people would reach out to me and I'll just connect them to Masha. And she's already scheduling calls to prepare them for interviews and all of that. She's a great person. Masha, thank you for doing this. And um, guys, you can also thank her for her time. She'll be our program lead for the OCM, manage, um, OCM training when we kick off. So please um, stay tuned and listen to her. So for the next three weeks, um, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll be learning so much, right? And this is the outline. You might want to take a screenshot if you want to. So this week, we'll start with an outline of what um, OCM is all about, why it's important in organization, what um, the role of um, 
an OCM leader, an OCM specialist should be. And she would also walk us through a high level template of what um, organizational, um, a, a high level approach of what um, um, an OCM initiative would look like within organization. Next week, she would um, take it a, a little bit deeper and we'll talk about how to prepare for change initiative, how you define change, how you perform stakeholder analysis, how do you conduct your change readiness assessment? How do you try to understand sponsor's competence and um, craft your change strategy and also conduct um, that um, your impact assessment? Because all of this goes into, these are some of all the activities you will do when you are preparing um, for organizational change management within a project or any initiative within the organization. And then week three, we would um, wrap up with a um, change management plan, analysis of some change scenarios. She has some um, sample interview questions, which she'll be going through and walking you through some templates in more detail, right? Cause she's also gonna be sharing with you tools and um, templates that she uses on the job. So that it's not just gonna be only um, tell, tell, tell. She's gonna show and tell you as she goes along the way. So um, without much ado, I'm going to hand it over to Masha so that um, she can deliver what she has prepared for us today. Thank you. Hi, Masha. You're muted. I think I've stopped sharing. I'm not able to unmute myself. Oops. Am I on? Um, no, I think it's working now. Are you here, able to hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Ogi. Thank you for that introduction. I'm so happy to be here tonight. And I see the audience is just coming in. It's good to see that so many people are interested in change management. Right. I'm going to share my screen. Ogi, can you confirm what you're seeing on the screen, please? I can see Chain Management Masterclass 2023. Okay, awesome. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Just give me one moment. I my Zoom is I, I see I see course and um, content audience. Okay, I'll just start. The Zoom is in front of me, but I'm going to try and make <laughs> sure that, yeah, I go through. All right. Good night, good afternoon, good evening. I'm just saying it so I capture everyone in the different time zones. I recognize, oh, good morning as well. I recognize that people are here from all over the world, right? So today we're going to talk about change management, try to whet your appetite a bit and, you know, introduce you to what the, the job of a change practitioner is day in, day out, right? Um, it's, it's a lucrative feel, you know, an interested one. I quite enjoy what I do day in and day out. As Ogi mentioned earlier, the course really is designed for people who want to be practitioner. And we are here, the information that you'll learn over the next three days will help you to kind of kick, hit the ground running as you join an organization or an initiative, right? She um, showed this earlier, so I'll just jump into what is it that I want you to take out of the next hour. So we have three hours prepared 
and uh, Ogi kind of gave you a highlight of the next three weeks. But today, at the end of today, the goal is to ensure that you understand OCM, the role of OCM within an organization. I will expose you to some of the activities and the deliverables. So we start to talk about those activities and deliverables. So next week, we kind of drive in a little bit deeper, dig a bit deeper. I'll also speak about the types of changes that the organization faced today and introduce you to defining your change approach, right? Some of us here might be BAs, project managers, we might be in different careers looking to switch, right? And I'm hoping at least today, we'll give you an idea how to break grounds in this area, right? Um, so one of the things I want you to do, feel free, okay, we do have an active chat, right? To, as you go, just feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we can, I'll try to respond to some of them as we go along. Now, change management as a feel. You will know that it is, it is growing a lot. In, um, if you're interested in the, the job as a change manager, you'll see it come up on LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor. For me, day in, day out. Um, I know one of the conversations Ogie and I had earlier was to, to talk about some percentage growth. And maybe in the next session, I can speak more about that. But to... to for you to understand that change management as an industry, as a practitioner, it is increasingly growing within organization. Organization have permanent roles set up. They also are working towards having center of excellences within different businesses. Now, I also have here how OCM can show up. So OCM itself means organization change management, but the job titles that you'll see advertised are like change coordinators, change analysts, um, change specialists. The most popular one you'll see is maybe the change manager, right? You have project managers that are change managers. You have consultants. You have program managers, transformation managers. These are the different titles that you will see advertised. So if you're curious about wanting to go into the career, uh, you, you don't have to just talk to looking for a change management specialist job or a change manager. There are different titles that you can dig in and apply and look if your responsibility is transferable to that field. Right? No, I also kind of copied a, a job ad from, I think, Indeed or... LinkedIn, right? And as you can see, I just pull one for a change management specialist. And some of the things that, that we'll be talking about in the course is about resistance. And I don't know if I'm able to show you this on the screen. We'll be diving deep in terms of how to match the different responsibilities, creating a communication plan, you know, identifying resistance, create, building out your resistance management plan, conducting impact analysis, and we're hoping to achieve this or at least introduce you to these different responsibilities that a change manager needs to conduct on a day in, day out, right? All right, so we, I know you're calling in or joining us from all over the world, but one of the things I hold, and I don't know if you guys are, anyone is on this call that is familiar with the Randstad salary guide that is the typically um, share on a yearly basis. Now, you will see, I'm located in Canada, so you'll see a breakdown of the different salary range for the different levels that you're at within change management. Now, you have, you know, you can see one to three years, which would be more of a, a coordinator or a change analyst role. 
the the four to seven might be a change specialist kind of role, change manager uh, kind of role there about the, the senior level. You can be a change specialist and still in that senior level kind of salary. Also, you can't just look at it as a straight change management direct experience. The experience that you're getting today from your other jobs can put you in one of these different category or years of experience if you're able to, you know, align all of these experience that you have. And I don't know if anybody's seen those figures, but it's it's way higher than minimum wage. So it's a quite lucrative field to kind of to get in. Great. Right. Some of the skills that is required <laughs> that most organization is asking for. And the common ones that you can see is leadership, knowing the business. You need to be well organized, problem solver. And you might be sitting in your chair and say, oh, but this is common to all jobs, right? That's what you're thinking? Well, everybody is on mute. So I'm not going to get a response right now. Yes, it's common to all jobs, but it shows up a lot when executing on some of these change tasks that you will have to carry out day in, day out, right? There are different types of initiatives within an organization, and it's going to need a combination of all of these skills to actually show up as an individual within your role, right? And to be able to successfully help individuals and group through a change. Now, one of the most critical skills I will call out here on this slide that I feel a lot of change practitioners need to ensure that they have all of them, but another, I have it at the bottom as listening. Right. And I, I, as a person, think listening is acquainted to attention to detail. Change management on a whole is a very people focused industry. Right. If they want you when you're in an organization, you have to be emotionally connected sometimes with the people. You need to be able to look through the different lens of what individuals are going through or groups are experiencing within an organization. And kind of bumping up on your listening skills will help you to get better at all the other skills that comes to complement it, right? Now, here I have what I call my career journey. And change management itself, the feel is, is slightly unconventional, right? You know, today they might can get a degree in change management, but previously it's a learned feel, a self-developed feel. And you're, you need to be able to connect what you're doing to the change management job on a whole. Now, I am showing you this and I am challenging you over the next three courses that we have to map your own journey. Now, I started out, as Ogi said, I have a IT degree. A lot of change jobs that you see advertised will ask for a degree in HR or a business related field, mostly in HR, right? But here is someone that is coming from the IT industry and then transition into the change management field from 2007 to say 2018, change management were just responsibilities as a part of my role. I want everyone here 
who is interested in change management, right? Over the next couple of days, you write down your journey. And as you learn from this course, take note of what is it that you're doing today or what is it that you have done in the past that is related to some of the things that you're going to learn as you move forward. Can I challenge everyone to do that? And one or two brave person will come back and share their journey. And as you can see, say 2017 to 20, well, 2019 to 22, the change management jobs that I'm doing are now change management focus. It's not just a responsibility of a previous role, but every responsibility that is listed under this job is related to change management. So I point this out to you tonight because some of us are not in change management roles and we are looking to transition to change management roles. So you need to be able to identify what is it you're doing today that can help to transition you to where you want to be. Because it's not an un it's an unconventional kind of job. Certification is good and I do rec highly recommend them, but practical experience speaks volume. And to be able to tie what you're doing to where you want to go will bring you a far way, okay? Now, one of the things too I wanted to highlight is around the type of certifications that are available. You have the most common ones, which is the pro side training. This is very popular in North America. Right, pro side training. If you look at most of the job ads, they will ask you. Most organization, however, will train you or pay for you to get um, certified in pro side methodologies and practices. Right, it's a three day program, and after which you get a foundational um, knowledge of change management and you get certified. So if you're I would recommend allowing the organization that hire you to you know, pay for this certification. The other one, which is the Certified Change Management Professional, professional which is the CCMP. Now this one is equivalent to a PMP, right? It's very popular here in North America, in Australia, it's very it's it's a global certification and it you have to have practical experience to be able to sit this one. The other organization, which is the Change Management Institute, talks about um, change management kind of capabilities. So these are very popular certifications that you will hear about and popular organization when it comes to global practices of change management. So the CCMP, which is done through ACMP, which is the Association of Change Management um, Professionals, they are the ones that set the standards that practitioners live by or should live by. And the CMI, which is the Change Management um, Institute, focus mostly about building change management capabilities within corporations and businesses. So if you're interested, these are some of the certifications you should look into. All right. So let's jump into just OCM knowledge, because this is something that we want to accomplish today just general knowledge around OCM. No, we can't teach OCM without defining what is change. And before I move on to talk about these definition, which brave person 
the only person I can see because I have Baba Tunde. Can I pick on you, Baba Tunde? Is is it, that's how the name is called? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. And pick on do you me. have a paper and a pen in front of you? Sure, I do. And I'm going to ask everybody to do this exercise, right? So what hand do you write with Baba Tunde generally? Right. Mm -hmm. What hand do you write with? Your, your right hand or your left hand? Your right, right. hand? Right hand, yeah. Okay. So everyone, can you write on a piece of paper and just write your name? Write your name on a piece of paper. This is an exercise they take typically do. Okay. So Baba Tunde, also everyone on the call if you want, can you use a left hand and write your, your name as well, please? Yeah, yeah I can give it a try. <laughs> How is it going? How does it feel? Very stressful. It's not <laughs> easy as when I was using my right hand to write. Okay. And You're still going? Is, did you finish? Yeah, I finished it. Oh, good for you though. You jump at it and you jump at the change immediately, right? You bear through the, the stress to the end of it. So it's good for you. Right? You didn't stop and say, I can't be bothered. Did anybody else brave enough to try? And it was, and how did that feel? Yes, I tried it too, and it was the struggle with the left hand because I'm right handed. <laughs> but yeah, I made it true. You made it true. Okay, that's awesome. Did anybody on the call say, I'm not going to? go ahead with this this makes no sense did anybody did that who is brave enough to say you know what i am just listening i'm not going to change today all right so i'm just going to assume that some people do did that and some people actually tried but good job well, well marcia <laughs> i did the opposite oh yeah because you're left-handed <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, it didn't feel um bad, but it did feel like it took a little bit more effort in writing. Okay, good job. Hey. So the reason I did that is it's for you as an individual to be able to define change or feel what change is, right? Now there are two organizations here, and you can find change uh, definition all over the internet if you google it but the ones that we have here is by the the governing bodies right so change the prosci and the acmp now change as acmp defined it is transition from current to future state current the condition at the time the change is initiated. So right now, Baba Tunde writes with his right hand by default. And what we're asking him to do in the future, which is the future state, is to change and start writing with the left hand, right? The future state is a condition at the time when the benefits have been realized. So we want you to change to the writing with your left hand. Prosci, on the other hand, is defined change as change is a project. It's an initiative. Solution being introduced within an organization or probably within your life, right? To improve the ways work gets done today 
to solve a problem or to take advantage of some opportunities for the business or to grow. That's what changes when you think of how change show up within the different organizations. Now, change management itself is something different. It's different from the change itself that somebody is going through. And here again, ACMP and ProSci have defined what these are. So ACMP definition for change. So as a change practitioner, uh, what ACMP is saying, the practice of applying a structured approach to transition, approach to the transition of an organization from its current state to the future state to achieve the benefit. So basically, you need to have a plan, right? A structured approach and follow step one to 10 and help persons through that change or an organization to the change. ProSci itself now have a different spin to it. Basically, ProSci is saying to realize the project objective. So the project have a list of objectives that I want to achieve this by a certain time. Also defining the organization by applying a systematic approach for helping people. So I do believe these definitions are very similar. One says a structured approach and one used the word a systematic approach. The difference between the two is that the ProSci definition speaks about helping people, right? Impacted by the change to move through their individual transition. So a while ago, Baba Tunde wrote down his name with his right hand. It felt uncomfortable. And he went through, I asked him, no, the, the right hand was comfortable. It's his normal way of doing things. I asked him to transition to trying his left hand. You know, it felt uncomfortable. But in his own way, he went through and wrote his name to the end. Right. So ProSci speaks about doing it at the individual level and helping individuals to just navigate that change at their space. Right. Now, in an organization, as a change specialist, one of the things I want you to understand you have two different types of change management that is being practiced. Same kind of job, same kind of responsibilities, but you have what is called the project change management and the organization change management. Now, if you're in project management today, you will know that a project, manage, project, a project itself has a start and an end date. Which means that when resources are enrolled on a project or added to a project, they will start at a certain time and off board at a certain time. So once the project goes live, more than likely the resources that are working on that project is moving on to another project. So if you're a practitioner on a project, you're working in a certain time frame. Organization change management, on the other hand, you have to think about benefit realization, sustainment, value realization. When this project goes live, and you transition the project to operation, how do you future proof the, what the project introduce into organization? How do you concretize the ways of working so that organization can realize the value or the benefit that they initially intended to achieve? So from a project change management, 
at the end of the project, we have certain objectives and based on the, the measurements that are set to measure if we have achieved what we want, the change work is done and the practitioner gets transitioned to different projects within the organization. But organization change management looks at it more broadly. The project does one aspect of change and then the change work is now transition to operation so we can future prove the ways of working, the new policies that be, is being introduced, the new process that is being introduced within an organization. The organization change management helps with the adoption of change and ensuring that the future state is achieved. Okay. All right. Now there are types of, there are different types of ways that change show up or different organization change. You will have merger and acquisition projects, process redesign, new systems that is being introduced, policies and procedures that are changed. Do you remember I just showed you earlier about my career journey and the first say, couple of years change management was just a part or one of the responsibilities of the jobs that I'm doing. Why this slide is important to you that is in the room today, what process redesign initiative have you been a part of that you can write down, right? The organization is introducing a new project or a new process. They're redesigning how you work today. Have you played a role in that initiative? And what was, what was your role in that initiative? Think about it and write it down, okay? They're introducing a new system, okay? Were you a subject matter expert for the old ways of working? Did somebody need to come to you to kind of map out how you're working today? What kind of information did you provide to help the organization with this initiative? Were you a part of the training? Did you work, were you a part of the feedback process? Right? Were you a part of the recommendation process? Right? So think about the current responsibilities that you have today and write it down because I'm gonna challenge somebody on this call to kind of identify, oh, this might be change or you, you, you didn't even know you were doing change prior to this call, all right? All right, so one of the most important things that a change practitioner will need to do is to develop a change approach, a change strategy. A change approach itself, right, is how do you execute on change or your change initiative? How will you implement change within an organization? What is your strategy to implement? Right? How will you help the organization reach to that future state? And the next couple of slides and next couple of minutes is just to introduce you to how to build out your change approach if you're asked to do that. Or even identify how are you contributing to a change approach today as you work. So there are different change management models and 
if you've heard of any, um, I'm highlighting a few examples of different change models that you will hear that are common and people use them very often. The ProSci methodology, and that's the one I'm going to talk to you about today because I live it day in and day out. You will hear about the Lewin change management model. Cutter McKenzie. These are very popular change management models that you can use to kind of build out your change approach. The change approach is important because, as I said earlier, this is how you start. This is how you action. This is how you speak to leaders, business lead, different employees on how you're going to execute on a change initiative within an organization. This is how you help people to understand what is it that you're going to, to do, what is it you're going to work on, what actions you're going to take. Right? I want you to drop in the chat if you can, like if you've heard of any other change model outside of this one or if any of these you're familiar with, just chat, drop in the chat which one you are familiar with. All right. And probably Ogi, Ogi can help me to, to talk through them at the end of the call. So the ProSci methodology speaks about three different phases for a change approach. Preparing for the change, managing the change, and sustain the change. Now, if you're on the call and you're familiar with the PMP knowledge areas, right, which is the 10 knowledge areas that you, when you're planning approach and the, the project managers or the PMI live by. I'd like you to put yourself in the frame of mind that this is very similar. For those who are not familiar with the PMI, that's fine, okay? But for those who are, this methodology here is basically quite similar in terms of as a change practitioner, you should be able to walk through phase one, preparing an approach, and it's preparing the approach is all about planning for that project, right? That initiative that you are being assigned. Managing phase is all about know that I've prepared and I'm, I need to action all the plans that I've decided in the planning phase. And sustainment is that I've put this into place. How can I ensure that I future-proof it, right? I get to where I want to be and I maintain it. So I showed you the ProSci at a high level. I did not walk through everything detail because what I really want to get to is breaking out those different phases and what is it that you need to do as a practitioner. Now, the change approach and the work included in preparing for that change, managing that change, and sustaining those outcome. Now, in preparing for change, managing the change, and sustaining the change, there are four buckets of work that you'd need to be mindful of. Change impact assessment and readiness. You need to think about leadership and organization alignment. You need to think about communication and engagement and learning and development. I put those in four buckets. 
right? Now, as we go in the next, say, two hours and we talk, we're going to break down what activities fall under these different buckets of work. As you gain your experience, you can change these buckets of work if you want, whatever makes your life easier. But this is a guide to help you manage a project. There are a number of um, activities that is gonna roll up in you understanding how to conduct change impacts or identify change impacts, how to be ready for change or assess change readiness or being able to explain to a leader that you're ready for the change or you're not ready for the change. The leadership and organization alignment, bringing those information that you've gathered to say, you know, leadership is aligned or they agree with all of these items that we've found. We all believe in the same things. We have to buy in or you might find out that there is a disagreement. So in preparing for change, we're going to think about these four buckets of work and what is it that we need to do under these four buckets of work. And as the ProSci methodology highlighted, you have preparing for change, managing that change, sustaining the change. These four buckets of work will fall under all these phases. And I want you to think of it as a cyclic approach. We are preparing for change. How do we prepare for change impacts? How do we prepare our plan to assess impacts or readiness? How do we prepare to identify leadership and organization alignment, right? And at the same time, we have to think about, now that we've planned for this, how do we action it? How do we manage it throughout the process? And at the same time, we have to think about, all right, how do we sustain it? So it's, it's a lot going into all of these buckets of work and we'll hope to break down as we move forward. Yeah. Right. So what we'll do over the next couple of weeks, because tonight really is to introduce you to, you know, the OCM knowledge and to introduce you to some of the different activities and deliverables within organization change management. And what you have here is the preparing for change approach. And you can see I have four buckets of work. And under these four buckets of work, there are different activities. So for example, change impact readiness. A key activity on the change impact slash readiness, you need to be able to define the change for the project. You need to be able to conduct situation analysis. So these are some of the activities under just preparing for the change or planning for the change. Assessing the size and the nature of the change. So you as an, a practitioner need to know whether is it a departmental change? Is it an organization-wide change, a division? Is it a country-wide? So these are some other things that you need to understand upfront. Out of that bucket of work, there are key outputs. Examples are, of those are you understanding your stakeholders, you know how many people are involved or how many people will be impacted. You'll draft your change strategy. You'll understand what's the objective of the project, right? These are some of the key outputs of your change impact and readiness activities under preparing for the change. At the same time, you have to think about, right, checking whether you have leadership and organization alignment for all of these information that you're finding and defining at least a draft plan for stakeholder 
engagement and communication and learning and development. So there's a lot you can see in your preparing for approach and we are hoping to touch some of these activities from a practical level over the next couple of weeks. But this is to give you an idea of the activities that are involved in preparing and the outputs for preparing the approach. At the same time, you remember a part of the me methodology or your change approach is managing the change. So you've planned for the change and now you have to think about how am I going to action it and manage it? So you're working on a project, you've, you've conducted your change impact assessment, a key activity is to update it, right? Tracking the issues and stuff like that, right? Your output is having that impact assessment deliverable. And you will see what that looks like in the next couple of days. Your output is having a coaching plan because you've assessed your current state. You know where you want to get to in the future state. You need to identify all of those in-between transitional activities that will help a person get to that future state. So you have to write down whether a leader needs coaching based on some of the things that you find out. The training plan that comes out of the impacts based on the impacts you've identified, right? So those are some of the key deliverables of managing the change. And at the same time, we have to think about an, another important aspect of the approach, sustainment activities. I say earlier, we need to future proof what we're doing. If we're introducing a new technology, how can we future prove it, right? How can we measure that we have achieved what we've set out to achieve, All right? Right, so who is brave enough to tell me the difference between a project versus an organization change management based on what we've discussed earlier? Who is brave enough to tell me the difference on this call? I'm going to try, Marsha. I'm going to give it a go. Okay. Go ahead, Vanessa. All right. My understanding from what was presented um, in terms of applying um, project change management versus organizational change management, mm -hmm. it's that pro the project has a definite, um, you're applying this, you're, you're, you're working on this change in a defined period of time, right? Um, once that is finished, um, that you move on to another project. While with organizational change management, you are transitioning whatever the, the organizational project will be, whether it's a merger or it's a implementation of a new system or something that would be transitioned to um, for operations use then you have to, um, you're, after is it implemented, you're still doing your an analysis to see how that, the effectiveness of the change per se. That's correct. Good try. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. So, and, and it's important for you guys to know this because when you're hired, most of the times, we are hired to be on projects, right? So for the most part, you will be living in that project management world, kind of executing on change, right? Working closely with your project managers, your business analysts, you know, your pro process architect to kind of drive the change for the organization. But a lot of times organization, you know, I don't have the numbers. I don't know if Ogi have that number quick for us to share in terms of why project fail, because we just stop at a point, right? The 
in terms of testing whether we've achieved those benefits or those values from those initiative, there are no checks and balances. And the organization change management aspect of it help us to ensure that the benefit is realized, right? The value is realized from the initiatives that the organization takes place in. Now, from if you're hired in a senior role, the expectation is going to be at the organization level. I must tell you. And if you look at jobs out there that is being advertised, they're calling for those change specialist kind of role. They're calling for the change manager kind of role. So it's good for you to start having that mindset that we are going to help that organization achieve that benefit, driving into those impacts so that they understand the information that we're gathering so we can bring it back to the leaders and live in that organization change management kind of feel. Ogi, are we at time? I feel like we are because you came on. Yes, we are. <laughs> but I think we're done is just to introduce them to what's coming next for next week. Yeah, and we do have a couple of questions of how you take what's coming up for next week. Okay. All right. So next week, if you join the call, what I'll try to do is to look more in terms of the, the work that is being conducted day in, day out, right? Today is to ensure that we set do our groundwork of ensuring you understand what organization change management is, right? How lucrative the field is. Next week, what we hope to achieve is introducing you to some of the different templates and the different responsibilities that you need to conduct. And as you see, we're gonna perform stakeholder analysis, develop the organization change strategy wheel, talk through that, creating and assessing change readiness. These are different responsibility for a practitioner, assessing the leadership and sponsors competence, resistance identification, and some of the most critical work that we have to do is change impact assessment. Okay. Thanks everyone and over to you, Oki. Um, okay, so the first question, someone was asking about um, the certification you would recommend for a beginner. Um, let me scroll up there. I know I saw that question. Yeah. So for a beginner, right? So if an organization, I, it's ProSci, right? The, the ProSci certification, it's a good certification for a beginner. And I do recommend that you the organization it's it, it's a quite an expensive uh, um, certification and most organization that you are working with will support you getting that certification am i talking broadly or it's just the organizations that i work with ogi but no. um I, I tell people the same too rather than you invest your limited funds in certification Use it to get practical hands-on training because that's what you really need to hit the ground running. And when you demonstrate value to your employer, they would not hesitate to pay for your certification. I also um, advise my mentees when they um, get job offers, part of what they should negotiate for would be um, those certification training and professional um, annual dues. So I am I'm I'm, I'm with you um, on that. So um, let me see. Um, another it. asked a question: um, What, which do you recommend between ProSci and CCMP? CCMP. All right. So both certifications are good, and if you're starting out as a practitioner, right, ProSci is good. If you are a solid practitioner, CCMP is the one I would recommend. So if you've practiced for a number of years, because to be able to sit 
the CCMP, you need to prove that you have executed change management responsibilities on a number of projects, right? So you have to build that profile and shows, show your years of experience in executing change management experience. Well, ProSci, on the other hand, train you to get to that point, right? So you'd start with ProSci and then look towards getting your CCMP. Thank you, Masha. Masha, there's something I wanted to address. So you asked the question about um, other chain management methodology or approaches, and I see people here say ProSci, ADCA, Quota. Can you differentiate between the um, chain management approach you, you showed us to prepare, manage, and sustain? What's the difference between that and ADCA? I know both of them, you hear them, those are the languages you speak um, in ProSci. Can you differentiate that so that the audience know they are not exactly the same and understand what it means? Okay. So ADCAR is, as, is when you think of ADCAR, ADCAR is very individual based, right? No, ADCAR is really explaining to an individual, where are you on that change curve? So it talks about awareness are you aware right do you have desire so it's very individual base do you have desire as an individual to make that step to the future um, state it helps the practitioner to know when we do a, a run an art card test on an individual it helps the practitioner the change practitioner how to help a particular individual get to the future state. So is it that the individual don't know about the change that is happening and we need to do a little bit more communication. We need to explain the why to the, the group because if you're in an organization, maybe it's a whole group get missed out of the communication. It me if we'll do an assessment from an ADCAR level because ADCAR talks about awareness, desire, knowledge, you know, um, well, what's what it goes again, Ogi, reinforcement of the change. So awareness, we, desire, ADCA, A, D, awareness, desire, knowledge. A is, um, a, sorry. Okay. Awareness, desire, knowledge. Okay. I can't remember the A, but the R is reinforced. <laughs> Ability. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ability. Thank, thanks for your help. Yeah, Trisha has helped us here too. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So if you think about Adgar, right, it's on the individual level. And as I said before, Adgar helps you to understand where a group is and how you can help them with the change process, right? Or uh, individual a change management approach is different or a change strategy the change strategy itself or the approach speaks about the work that you as the practitioner need to do in order to help the project or the initiation achieve the future state it's not looking at the individual level. So doing the ADCAR assessment is one activity in your change approach. I don't know if that clears it up. It's just one activity because creating a change strategy does not tell you where an individual is on the change, the change curve if I can explain that. And the ADCAR helps you identify where um, you are on the change curve. So if I could go back to, what's his name? Babatunde, was that his name? Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah. You when I ask him to, to um, use his right hand and write his name, and then I ask him to switch his and go to the <laughs> left, <laughs> that's him going through that personal change experience the moment I said use the left hand he tried it right away 
So it means that he had the desire, right? Um, this is an easy change, but a difficult one in terms of knowledge would do with training for that particular individual. But Baba Tunde already initiated the change trying to practice the right to his right hand. He, his limitation in terms of the curve would be his ability. ability because yeah. because he, has, he needs to aware, practice. Yeah. He has a desire to change and knowledge of how to show the ability. Yeah, you're right. And if you go back to a change approach now, the change approach would tell you, okay, we've assessed the change. We are putting in this new system. It's going to impact. We are asking a thousand people to change from using their right hand to their left hand. Um, say 500 people are had that desire, you know, so they're good to go. Our change approach is just to say, put them in a class and help them to develop their ability a little bit better. While a next part of our change approach would be, oh, we have 250 people saying, I, am, I don't, I've been writing with my right hand for so many years, why do I need to? So your next change approach, what are we going to do with those 250 people who will not make that switch to your left hand? What's the change approach to help them build their desire to get to the point where we want them to be? Right, And then you might have a next group that you need to think about a different strategy or approach to help them cross, right? So the change approach is the number of activities that you need to execute to help from a change practitioner side. The ad car is what the individual is experiencing at the time. I think I've stayed at that question a little bit too long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, can you get a job without a certification? Yes, you can. What you need to do is take up that challenge that I've given you today, write down your career journey, think about the different change within an organization. I've been a part of a merger and acquisition. What was my role right, in that process? Was I receiving the change? Was I contributing anything? I have been a part of a process change or a policy change, what was my role? So start writing down your transitional act, um, skills, right? Think about what changes and how change show up within an organization and how, what is it that you're doing today it might sound similar and we can talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, Taiwo, I don't know, I don't have the answer to this question, but if anyone knows, kindly help Taiwo out here. He's asking if anyone knows if you can expense ProSight certification while filing taxes. Um, I yeah, have no can. idea. Yes, yeah, um, so you get a you get an um you get a rebate if you okay. um what is it called? I just read up about it this week, actually. Like there is a $250 rebate. And if you don't access it, I think it gets added like another $250. I can send you that link, um, Ogi, and you read, but it's there. It's, okay. It is an education rebate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, if you share that out, uh, maybe Taiwo, I don't know how you reach out. If you're in the group, I'll drop it in the group also. Yeah, thanks so much, Masha. Um, we're looking forward to next year. But um, I just want to get a bit of a feedback. So um, how did you find the session today? Was it engaging enough for you? Was it, um, did you learn? What did you learn? Just share your feedback with us. So um, if, um, if there are things you are looking to learn, let us also know so we can incorporate it into um, next week and the coming week. If you have questions, Maybe you are already on the job or you've done some cert um, certification training in um, organizational chain management. Kindly let us know what you are looking to learn and let's see if we can incorporate that in the next two hours. But um, aside from that, let us know. Let us know what you think. How was the presentation? How did you like it?
Okay, while we are getting feedback from um, others here, Masha, do you want to share your screen and just tell us again what we are expecting next week? So, um, to whet our appetite more and kindly come in person. Today's session will be made um, available, but I'm not assuring you you would um, get it um, next week. So please come in person, take notes and learn and ask your questions in person, okay? Um, yeah, so next week we're learning um, how to define change, perform stakeholder analysis, prepare a change readiness assessment, understand how to check um, the sponsor's competence for change. Yeah, your sponsors may not know how to manage change, so you might need to coach them. Um, also how to create um, a change strategy and conduct an impact assessment. So um, the same time next week, um, next week, Tuesday, same time, kindly be on time because we'll, uh, there won't be introduction. We'll just hit the ground running. So we maximize our one hour time. Um, thank you so much. Masha, any um, final words before we call it an evening? Uh, thank you everybody for joining tonight. And I'm looking forward to see you next week and Hope that we can have more conversations in this virtual world while we talk about change management. I'm excited to see that so many people are interested in this lucrative field. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, Masha. All right, good night, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're joining from. And um, we'll send the recording before the end of the week, so look out for it, okay? All right, bye, everyone. Thanks, okay. Good night. Yeah, bye.